Okay, now we're gonna get started. So, this is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna be recording this today. The only thing you need to do for this lesson is listen. You don't have to make notes, okay? You're not expected to blab amongst each other. If you have a question, you can ask a question, but I'm gonna be reading to you a lesson, okay? In Montessori circles, those are called the great lessons, right? I'm not going to read you one verbatim that has already been pre-made. Instead, I created one, I composed one to give you instead. How many people remember Mr. Taylor talking about language or words or something yesterday related to the history lesson that you took? What did you watch at the end? A video about uh, ancient tablet. Okay, a video about ancient tablet. Very good. And what did that tablet do? It what served as a type of communication. communication. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a lesson today on writing, language, words, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to say any more because I want you, during the lesson, try to think of it, some words that you can put down that are meaning catchers. It'll make sense once the lesson starts. When you hear a word that relates to a meaning catching type of word, put it down there. It'll make sense as we go. Okay? How many people have heard of a prefix or a suffix? Okay? Evan, what is a prefix? It's something that comes before a word. Like a prelude, right? Do you have another one? Like an example. Another example. Of a What is offered to you at Netflix when you when you first go through? They subscription. Well, sub it would be a prefix. Very good. I was thinking of preview. If you want to preview a movie, they'll give you a little snippet, right? But subscription is great. Okay. Any others that uh, let's go on to suffix real quick. What would be suffix then? After at the end, can you think of one? It'll be a suffix. Yeah. Uh, credits. Credits would be S, would be a kind of plural, kind of on the edge, on the edge. If I said to you, okay, Matthew? Able. Reasonable. Able would be a suffix. Okay? Or, Julian, if I said you are happy, you could say that you are filled with What would you be filled with? If I said, Julian, you look happy today. You must be filled with, you know, happiness. So N-E-S-S -S would also be an example of a suffix. Okay? Let me get on with the lesson because I want to make sure <laughs> that I'm respectful of your time. So today is the ninth, Tuesday. If I'm reading really slow, it's not to be seen as uh, a sign that I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I'm just enunciating the meaning because there is meaning in this story. Kate, are you okay? These, uni, is a prefix. Dis is a prefix. Are you wondering what these were? These are some words that you're going to experience during this lesson. A family or familia. That would sound familiar for Spanish, right? But that's from the Latin, familia. Lingua. Convectus. Convectio. Okay? You will hear these. 
And then I want you to, as you hear them, write down the meanings next to them. You'll hear it eventually. So, and this is the order that you'll hear them mentioned as we go through the story. Are you guys ready? Ready? Our words are limited, yet they are the closest we can get to explaining that which we experience. So words limit, right? That is a chair. Thus, it could, could we kind of use it as a table if we wanted to? Yes, but it's primarily a chair, okay? Because we all agree that's a chair. This is a table. That's a railing. Our desire to share experience is deep. So we're trying to figure out where does meaning come from? It's a desire to share our experience. Experience is living. And we desire to live. Not only to live, but to share that living with one another. We want to capture the meaning in the experience. Stories capture experience in words, in however limited a fashion those words might be. No form of communication seems adequate. I'm going to give you a hint. These are some of these. Music. Drums, gongs, chimes, paintings, drawings, sketches, plays, action, symbols. You don't have to have all of these, and I'm going to be giving you a write-up of this lesson. So I don't want you to be—I want you to be stress-free right now during this lesson. I want you to be taking it in. Okay. These are all items or actions to which we can assign meanings. They're meaning catchers, right? So that device that they were, you, were, you were looking at yesterday in that video is a device that helps communicate meaning. So don't words. Then words make sentences. Sentences make paragraphs. Oh, paragraphs make whole stories. There is something some force greater than, unlimited, infinite even. This is Montessori speaking. She calls it the cosmic, right? The unexplainable, the mysterious, that cannot be contained or fully explained. The finger can point towards it, an item, right? But the finger and the energy that is pointing towards it does not capture what it is. It's an action. So I'm going to restate this. The finger can point towards it, and it encompasses the finger and the power behind the gesture. So when you see someone point at something, it's not only they're pointing for you to draw your attention to what? To whatever they're pointing at, right? And you might have, to, when you're looking that way, you're experiencing something. So just the gesture itself, this whole thing is meaning. Stick with me. Being the action, right? Being is brought to life through action or experience. And feel free, you can doodle, you can do whatever you want, whatever you need to do to help you stay centered during this lesson. Do it. I forgot to tell you that earlier. Being is brought to life through action or experience. That is why the greatest and most valuable gift you can offer someone is your presence being present to them. 
listening to them. You are included. Meaning, when you spend time with yourself in developing your talents, you uncover or discover or encounter your uniqueness. So, uni means one. So, whatever talents you have, Julian, Dylan, uh, Kate, they're meant to be unique to you. You complement everyone else because of your uniqueness, right? And your unique set of gifts. You're not meant to be everyone else. You're supposed to be yourself. That's why uni, universe, right? Universal. When you spend time with yourself in developing your talents, you uncover or discover Uncover, this means un, to, un, or encounter, which means en, I didn't put that on there, is in, like inner. So when you encounter your uniqueness, you are discovering something about yourself. Now, bear with me on this one. This is why distractions are so powerful. You give power to these distractions. What are distractions? Things or actions that distract you. Look at the root of that word. Track. What runs on a track? A runner. What else? A car can on a track. What else? We were talking about this earlier, Dylan. What runs on a track? A horse track, yes. Okay, good. People can run on a track. Yeah? Train. Yes, great. Train is what I was kind of hinting at. But all those things are applicable, right? Let me go back. You give power. You give power. The other thing that we want to talk about, what is, do you guys know this cycle's theme? Potential. Okay. So, potent in Latin means power. Okay, potentia. You give power to these distractions, things, actions, that distract you, take you off course, off the rail, to your possible destination. Which I suggest, everyone's destination is realization. You are realizing a potential, your power. You are discovering your power if you don't get distracted. Who has power over you? You should have power over you. Nothing else. Bear with me too because I'm going to get mushy mushy. Love between people is an energy that is experienced. It, love, is a sense of wholeness that we feel. We can try to use words to describe love, but you don't get very far. Or you can't really nail it on the head, right? Love cannot be contained in such a way that we can point to it and say, there it is, here it is, over there. It simply is. We are meant for movement. You're jumping from love to movement? Just hold on. Don't go there. It is through movement that we express life our life force from within. We bring about life in or through experience or living. So love is a way of communicating our living. Huh. 
our senses are avenues through which we experience life. Would you all agree? You experience life through your senses, right? That pizza, that donut hole that you had earlier, amazing. The apple, when you bite into it and you feel the crunch and you hear the crunch, and then, then you feel the, the whatever, what is that called when you bite an apple and something, is it the juice gets all over your face. Okay. Our senses are avenues through which we experience life. Now, you might be asking yourself, does this mean that someone without a particular sense can be considered less than? Less than what? Less than fully human? Ah, no. No. They hold a key to challenge, to encourage, to enliven the hidden talents in us, in others. We want or desire deeply to share our experience that when we encounter someone differently abled, or some people say disabled, right? Apart from, separate from. That's why differently abled is a little bit kinder term than disabled. There is a burning in our heart, soul, mind, being, whatever. We want to communicate ideas to them. We want them to understand. How many people have run into someone else that speaks a different language and they're still trying, they want to share their being with you, and they keep on speaking in their native tongue, and you're like, you don't get it. I don't understand the language that you're speaking. You experienced that before? I'm looking at Kate, because she just got back from Poland, and that's what they were doing repeatedly. Okay, listen carefully. How many people know who Helen Keller is? Okay. For instance, Helen Keller was blind and intelligibly, again, not a very good word, but it's the only word I have to use at this point, intelligibly mute. She could make noises, right? But intelligibly, we couldn't agree on what those moans or whatever the sounds were making meant. She made sounds but they were unintelligible. She learned to adjust her manner of communication to be intelligible to others. How? She was taught to read through touch, right? Through reality, experiencing something. She was taught to read through caring, through the caring and the love of another. Her teacher. Her teacher wanted to free Helen from being lost or being apart from, separated from, or being alone. Again, words cannot or are unable to contain the meaning of love desire, care that we feel towards or in regards to someone else or their condition in life, whatever that might be. If they're depressed, if they're overly happy all the time, okay? It could be either, it doesn't have to be detrimental. When someone, oh, bear with me on this example. When someone is in a coma, Everybody understand what is it is to be in a coma? They're unconscious, right? What is possible? Can you visit the person in the hospital while they're in a coma? You can visit their body, right? But we're not really sure if you can visit their consciousness, their person, their being. Okay? The consciousness that is experiencing the coma. Okay? 
I know, this is like the spirits of the evil people are trying to get to us in this, with the rattling of the doors. In some strange way, do you experience that coma or the understanding of being in a coma by visiting them? That's a rhetorical question. It's just something for you to consider. Couldn't we liken it to when we feel misunderstood? I'm sure on some level we could all agree that sharing one's consciousness is always and in every situation muted at best. I'm going to put it differently. How many people have heard this after you've explained something to somebody? You understand? Or, you know what I mean? That is communicating your consciousness. Don't you wish that sometimes you could just plug something in your brain and plug, okay, now we, I got it. Words cannot get you on the same level as my understanding. I wish it was that simple, or we wouldn't have to have this lesson. It would free up so much time. But then you wouldn't be assigning meaning or understanding to what you're learning. Our words and actions are an attempt at efficient communication. Okay? So meaning catchers could be actions, right? Some say actions speak louder than words. How many people have heard that? Actions speak louder than words. I'd suggest actions speak in a unique fashion that are different from words. It's just somebody made a decision at some point to say that it was greater than. Who knows? Words can be empty, if not brought into being. And how do we do that? Through actions. Prove it! Show it to me! Come on! Let's go! Does that sound familiar? What is the meaning of familiar? Familia. It means something that is close to you, proximity-wise. Your family. It can include household people that are your servants and whatever. So familia means close proximity, something that's close to you and relationally. Okay? That is where that word originates from, from Latin. And what does it refer to? Or what does it point to? Things that are close to you, close to your experience. I'm almost done, by the way. Knowledge and understanding can be deepened through experience. Right? That's why somebody says, can you just show me how to do it, and then I'm going to do it, and then I'll learn that way. Don't explain it to me because I'm not going to be able to follow your directions. Just show me how to do it. That's why Maria Montessori would sit in front of her students and work on a, on a mat in front of them and show them. Where was everything pointed towards? The students that were experiencing what was ever on the, on the rug, on the mat. Mr. Patrick, I thought we started with words or language we did now we're back let's get back to words or language language comes from the word the latin root lingua lingua means tongue lingua means tongue we communicate words and meaning Thoughts, feelings, if we're communicating them, through our tongue, okay, in union with our vocal cords, right? And our breathing. Are you paying attention to your breathing as you're talking all the time? No. That's why some people don't like public speaking, because what do they try to do? I'm so, I'm so nervous. They're holding their breath all the time. Okay, what is language? This is what language is, and this is why we study systems. This, is, this dovetails off of what Mr. Taylor's been teaching you guys. Okay, this is the definition for language. Systematic means of communicating ideas 
or feelings by means of conventionalized signs, sounds, gestures, marks having understood meanings. These are meaning catchers, right? We were just talking about those. One of the words I used, Nehemiah, we communicate ideas or feelings by means of conventional signs, symbols, sounds. What does conventional mean? Convectus means agreement. We agree that this is a chair. We agree that this is a cushion. We agree that this is a chair, a table. Sorry. You guys are supposed to confront me. This is not a table. I mean, not a chair. So convectus means agreement. We're almost done. Okay? We agree on words out of convenience. Who can tell me what convenience means to them? You might be surprised by what it means the actual definition of convenience is. Anybody? What is convenience? Why do you go to a convenience store? It's easy. It's convenient. It's nearby. It serves your needs. This is the actual definition of convenience. Listen carefully. Convenient actually means suitable or proper. You've placed that chair in a convenient spot because you're, it's a proper distance from me, right? It's proper because you want to be part of the lesson and close to the lesson. That's proper. That's suitable. If you would have sat right next to me, I would say, uh, that is not convenient for me. Okay? It's not suitable. Conventio is suitable, is proper. Okay? So, that's why conventions happen. People that have similar interests go to conventions based on certain topics. Make sense? They're suitable or proper to my job, my profession. Now, I tried to use one of our dictionaries, and I've got to get some new dictionaries for us because they don't have the Latin roots in them or Greek roots or some of the French. Uh, this, this, this does, okay? When I first opened up a book, how many people have ever opened up a book and just read what's on the first page and thought that it was either kind of funny or interesting or nobody? It's just me. Okay, I, I opened this this morning and got a chuckle because the first word I saw when I opened the, opened the dictionary was nincompoop. Nincompoop. What does nincompoop mean? Anybody know? Huh? Idiot. Idiot. Fool. Clown. Out of the know. Okay? No one even knows. If you look it up in the dictionary, I wrote it down because I was like, I have to know it now. There is, the origin is unknown. They don't know where the word came from. They can say that it started coming into usage around 1676, though. Oh, because people had an agreement that it was a proper word that explained a nincompoop. Doesn't the word kind of sound like a fool or a bozo or whatever? It sounds like what it's describing. 